to work. Sir, we are live now. Uh, thanks a lot. On the behalf of Hocard and Ortho TV, I, Dr. Ravi Gaudi, welcome you all for this uh, enlightening session. Today evening, uh, we will be uh, discussing about uh, growth factor concentrate in orthopedics and uh, we'll also discuss case study of uh, uh, osteoporotic uh, peritrochantric uh, uh, hip fracture. And uh, to enlighten us with his uh, great knowledge, we have Dr. Karun Jain. Uh, and uh, he is a researcher, speaker, and I would like to introduce him uh, formally. So Dr. Uh, Karun Jain is a prominent uh, orthopedic surgeon. He has done his MBBS, D-Ortho, then MS Ortho and MCH. So uh, he has also uh, means uh, has this qualification from Royal College of Surgeon, Indianburg, UK. He has uh, uh, means a uh, flooding practice of orthopedic. Then he's specialist in fracture and trauma, sports injury and orthoscopy, and also a joint replacement surgeon. Dr. Karun is a senior orthopedic surgeon working at Pushpanjali Medical Center, Delhi. Dr. Karun has vast experience in the field of trauma surgeries, joint replacement, and other orthopedic related diseases. He has uh, many uh, published articles to his credit. Uh, he is a medical uh, researcher and uh, then delivered many uh, lectures in uh, national and international uh, congresses. So with that, uh, I hand over the session uh, to Dr. Uh, Karun Chen. And uh, I will request all the uh, attendees uh, to put uh, your queries and questions in chat box. So uh, I once again welcome you all uh, from uh, Ocard, uh, who are uh, makers of uh, perit uh, periteratite by the brand name uh, Teritide. So over to you, Karun, sir. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening to all my friends and listeners. And thank you, Dr. Ravi, for kind introduction. And uh, I acknowledge the efforts of Ocard team for uh, this lecture. And I'm very hopeful that next 30 minutes to 45 minutes will be very interesting and academically oriented. So basically this lecture will uh, be, you know, in two parts. One part will be the uh, recent innovation and the burning topic of orthopedics, that is growth factor concentrate injection. Before I start my topic, I can say that growth factor concentrate injection is not a PRP injection which is the biggest myth which is running in our orthopedic circuit. And second injection will, would be the role of teriparatide in fracture union in osteoporotic fractures, especially peritrochantric fracture, proximal part of hip. So to begin with, I'll start my uh, first PowerPoint. So if you allow me, I'll share the screen. Shall I? Sure, sir. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, your screen is visible and you are audible too. Yeah, so uh, today's topic, first topic, the role of growth factor concentrate in orthopedics, a novel technique. Uh, I recently happened to this give this lecture in All India Institute of Medical Science at Ames also, and a part of this lecture at uh, European Orthopedic Congress, annual congress effort at uh, in Vienna, uh, Europe. So uh, I am uh, doing this procedure since uh, almost uh, seven to eight years. And I'm happy to share my knowledge and information which I could gather on growth factor concentrate with the learned friend of my orthopedics and allied branches. So, yeah, uh, growth factor concentrate is the autologous preparation of growth factors, cytokinin, platelet in a concentration of usually you have platelets which is more than 1 million platelets per microliter or 2 or times, two to 7 times more concentrate in the whole blood. Initial use of this included hemostasis during the surgery and during you know thrombocytopenic patients. But nowadays it has attracted attention in multiple uh, medical specialties like orthopedics, maxillofacial surgeries, regenerative medicines and dermatologists are using the precursor of growth factor concentrate that is PRP since long in hair growth and different issues because of its ability to promote tissue, tissue regeneration and wound repair. Since GFC injection, it is autologous in nature. Its extraction is minimally invasive. It is affordable 
and it does not carry major side effects in therapeutic use. So its therapeutic uses are expanding day by day. And in orthopedics, it includes musculoskeletal injuries, osteoarthritis, tendinopathies, ligament injuries, muscle injuries, and bone, bone fractures. So as I told you in previous slide, it contains a mixture of growth factor and cytokinin, which are naturally occurring protein that stimulates cell growth and division, promote angiogenesis, that is formation of new blood vessels and accelerate tissue repair. They can be administered as a standalone therapy or in a combination of different therapies like bone marrow aspirate and uh, adipocyte stem cell therapies. During the past many years, uh, you know, a lot of amount has been written about the GFC injection and its potential effectiveness in treatment of injuries. Many famous athletes like Tiger Foods, Tanisha Rafa Nadal, uh, Indian uh, ace batsman Sachin Tendulkar, they have received GFC injection for various problems uh, like uh, uh, such as sprained knees and chronic tendon injuries. And of late, they have given credit to GFC injections with their being ability to return to their sport activity more quickly. So how does it work? It accelerates the tissue healing and regeneration by stimulating the new blood vessel formation and production, promote promotion of the new tissue cells leading to faster and more complete tissue healing. It also has anti-inflammatory properties by which it reduces the pain and inflammation around the joint. It is minimally invasive in nature, so carries the minimal side effect and can be given on OPD procedure also. And studies have shown GFC injection may lead to improved, uh, improved clinical outcomes and patient satisfaction for various diseases. So coming to the history, as I told you, PRP, the progenitor of GFC injection, was first developed in 1970, way back around 40 to 50 years back. And it was used in, in 1987 in Italy for open heart surgery procedure. And this use of GFC injection is getting popularity since mid 2010. And nowadays it has, you know, vast application in different medical specialties. The number of peer reviewed, reviewed publication studies on GFC injection and its efficacy has increased dramatically since 2007. So it has a greater concentration of growth factor than the whole blood and that is the reason of its use. I will come to the procedure of making in next slides. So uh, it what growth factor is it has? It has platelet derivative growth factor, transforming growth factor beta, fibroblast growth factor, insulin-like growth factor 1 and 2 and BEGF, vascular endothelium growth factor. This is one of the most important growth factor which is very much effective in especially in tendinopathies. So what is the procedure of making GFC injection? First three steps are common for PRP and GFC and fourth steps make GFC injection as a separate entity as compared to PRP injection. First step is by taking the procuring the blood from the patients usually uh, vein from the arm and collection of the blood in a EDTA tube. Uh, the collection of the amount of blood varies from different procedures and different protocols but usually 10 ml blood per joint is sufficient. Centrifuge. Uh, there are different techniques which are used, but we use a very standard technique that is dual spin technique and we use 900 and 1800 RPM per 10 minutes. Then different techniques are also there like 400 and 800, uh, 1600 and 3200. Uh, there are different techniques which are advocated, but we use this technique because of uh, well documented in the literature and we are getting good results with that. Then after centrifugation, there is a separation of growth factor by which we separate the growth factor from the centrifuge plasma. I will uh, show the uh, pictorial presentation, presentation next slide and then the concentration. After separation of the growth factor, which we take it in the syringe, uh, that is called PRP. And if we centrifuge further, then we can make either leukocyte rich PRP or leukocyte poor PRP. And this leukocyte rich PRP and leukocyte poor PRP are labeled as growth factor concentrate. So after PRP, if we make super PRP or leukocyte poor and rich PRP, the, that mixture is usually called growth factor concentrate. So this is the pictorial presentation. The first is leukocyte, uh, the above one is leukocyte poor PRP uh, making. So in which we had the whole blood, then we spin with the soft spin 
and we have a uh, supernated plasma, buffy coat and RBC. Then we take only supernated plasma and discard RBC and buffy coat both. And after that, we take in a simple normal tube and centrifuge again, which is called a hard spin. And then the upper two third part of is discarded and lower one third part, which is leukocyte poor PRP is used as a final product. Leukocyte poor PRP is very common of not creating any inflammatory response. So it is very effective in cold orthopedic cases like, like osteoarthritis of the knee or ankle arthritis because there we not, may not need to require create any inflammatory response. <clears throat> For tendinopathies and all the inflammatory disorders like tendinopathies, uh, adhesive capsulitis of shoulder, tennis elbow, uh, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendinitis, we require to create inflammatory response. So there we require leukocyte rich PRP. There is a small technical difference after the first spin uh, in that we take in the next bottle both the buffy coat and the plasma and then we go for a hard spin and after that we discard the upper two-third of the plasma and lower two-third we use which is final product of platelet rich plasma plus leukocyte in abundance. So leukocyte rich and leukocyte poor plasma depending upon the indication in orthopedic. So next the question is it effective? Yes. Nowadays, many uh, uh, research article meta-analysis are coming in favor of GFC injection, but the efficacy depends on many factors like uh, the amount of whole blood collected, the whole blood platelet counts, injection dose of platelet, GFC leukocyte counts, preparation technique, platelet activation method, concentration of platelet release factors, and you, either we are using automated man, uh, method or manual method. Uh, if we are not using the proper technique of procuring the sample or by uh, making the sample properly or injecting the proper way, we, I, uh, we really doubt that we may get a good results. And there are many studies which says that a failure of this injection lies in procuring and making of this injection. Although GFC injection has been using since very long, but because of variation pro, uh, preparation protocol and the target of attaining more than one million more than one million cells per, uh, per microliter is the challenging part. And nowadays we have a proper GFC collection kit. Uh, I remember one of the company named Vocard, which are uh, you know. Uh, 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 distributing and uh, you know in the market for the GFC kits at various levels. I don't remember any other company name. Otherwise, you can do in a homemade uh, normal manual methods by using simple EDTA tube and the plain tubes. Or if you want a uh, simple technique, you can take it from the pharma industry as well. Uh, so what is the difference in GFC PRP? I have told in previous slides. Uh, clinical application PRP is more useful in skin disorders like hair fall or chronic ulcers and GFC have more wider applications in osteoarthritis, adhesive capsulitis, fasciitis, wound healing, tissue regeneration and nowadays for fracture non-union uh, role of PRP is increased, uh, sorry, GFC injection is increasing day by day, especially for those uh, bones which have precarious blood supplies like lower end of tibia and fibula, scaphoid, tell us. Cost-wise, PRP and GFC injections, uh, you know, the cost varies from different protocols, but in general, GFC injection is more costly because of the procure method is little more big. <clears throat> uh, so this I have already told, uh, the effectiveness depends on the multifactorial, which I have told in earlier slides. So there are few studies which says the GFC injection is very effective. Like this one particular study of 230 patients use this injection in lateral epicondylitis, tendinopathies, and it says after 24 weeks, 84% patients who have re received this injection have a good reduction in pain and 68.3% patients reported the similar results. Another study is of around 99 patients which have received this injection for different tendinopathies, including tennis elbow, jumper's elbow, Achilles tendinitis, plantar fasciitis, they had a positive response by this injection. So why do we need this injection when we have so many modalities available? Well, 
uh, we require this injection when other traditional treatment may fail to provide adequate relief. GFC injection is derivative derived from the patient's own blood, so carries few risks or minimal risk. That is why patients do agree for this injection, and it is minimal invasive OPD based procedure. Uh, other modalities which we talk about osteoarthritis and adhesive, cost, uh, adhesive capsulitis in general because these are the two most common diseases which we encounter in our OPD. One is adhesive capsulitis of shoulder, second is osteoarthritis of the knee. Physical therapy is often effective but does not always satisfact, give the satisfactory response in relieving symptoms and improving function. function. Second, uh, in the both diseases, uh, uh, one very famous injection of a steroid cortisone injection is very famous but however the reduction of pain is temporary symptoms can recur in addition in tendons if we give this injection we all are aware that it may lead to weakening of the tendons or may worsen the injuries and due course of time NSAIDs which we can give effective in reducing pain but short acting habitual forming and we all are aware about this uh, uh, Complication of long-term use of NSAIDs like renal problem, stomach problem, blood pressure, and heart problem. Then what are the indications? Those patients who are having regular tendon pain affecting their daily activity. On those patients, physical therapy has not adequately improved the function or reduced the pain. Other non-surgical treatment have failed or been eliminated. The patient is sensitive to NSAIDs or patient do not want to take long-term NSAIDs because of the obvious contraindications. There are a lot more patients who want to go undergo surgeries, but we ca cannot operate on them because of different medical issues like CKD, CAD, liver damage, and etc. And there is a big class of patient, especially in case of osteoarthritis of the knee, those who are absolutely not willing for surgery, whatever you do, they have absolutely no for surgery. And even if they have absolutely no for surgery, if they visit in your OPD, you cannot leave them in pain. So those categories of patients, GFC injection is very much useful. This I already told indications are adhesive capsulitis from upper body to lower part, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, osteoarthritis. Nowadays, uh, because meniscus have precarious blood supply, there are many patients and many studies are coming up for those patients who do not under, want to undergo arthroscopy surgery can take GFC injection one week apart, three to four dose and can have good pain relief and disease management. Patellar tendonitis, Achilles tendonitis, fasciitis, adjuvant to tendon repair surgery and fracture union. Something which we should all remember that Anything which is good always have a limitation as well. GFC injection may not be recommended for the most severe cases of tendinopathies, which is tendon rupture or complete tear of the tendon. In those injections, we should always suggest the patient to undergo for surgery, even though this injection can help in augmentation of the surgeries and for speedy recovery and better healing. So GFC injections, other than the most severe case of tendinopathies are also not indicated for gross osteoarthritis of the knee where there is a genuverum or gross genuvalgus deformity because of those deformed knee, the injection cannot treat the disease. In these patients, one should always plan surgical intervention. So uh, when I say this, I always advise in my lecture that always discuss with patients about expectation versus reality. Do not promise stars to them. And as a surgeon, we should always keep in mind about the stage of the disease and counsel the patient accordingly. See, this injection being a natural injection, it has two parts. One is disease management. When we talk about osteoarthritis of the knee, and if we give this injection in early osteoarthritis or moderate stage osteoarthritis, this is very effective. It has a dual action. It has disease management and pain management both. But if we give this injection in advanced osteoarthritis, we should always counsel the patient that this injection is not a substitute of knee replacement surgery. I will repeat it again. If we give this injection in advanced osteoarthritis, 
this injection is not a substitute of knee replacement surgery but yes if a patient do not want to take nsaids for pain management do not want to take steroid injection for pain management management and do not want to undergo for surgery or cannot undergo surgery because of medical issues for those patients this injection is effective in advanced stages also for pain management only so if a patient is having advanced disease do not want to take pain killer but want pain management so this injection is well indicated the only thing is that one should be very clear in those patients that this injection is only limited to pain management not for the disease management do not advise a disease reversal in those patients otherwise it will lead to long term disappointment and bad patient doctor relationship so coming to the tendon surgeries when we have complete tendon injuries uh, the only answer would be surgical intervention especially in rotator cuff injuries but yes because rotator cuff also have precarious blood supply like meniscal injuries if we give this injection along with surgery this will lead to a better healing earlier healing and a good outcome and it can also prevent the stiffness of the joint so this is uh, a interesting slide about aaos the american association of orthopedic surgery guideline and as you can see the lower part of this slide that in equivocal treatment in procedural treatment intra articular steroid is as effective as prp treatment or arthroscopic surgery so they also recommend and gfc is a more advanced form of prp so in our opinion in my day to day clinical practice and in many literature studies this injection is as effective as steroid injection without having the side effect of steroids uh gfc injections as i told in earlier slide is nowadays being used in different cases of non union or delayed union cases like stafford and tellus fracture what are the contraindication those patients who have medical conditions that could worsen or spread with in injections like active infection metastatic disease and certain skin diseases those patients who have blood and bleeding disorders or those patients who are undergoing anticoagulant therapy or anemic and those patients who are pregnant uh, well i could not find out the details of the last point pregnancy i tried to search in different literature since i could not find out the exact reason why pregnancy is contraindicated i have put it in contraindication but this point i am actually not aware and i don't find a proper reason why this injection contraindicated in pregnancy but unless and until we have documented evidence that this injection can be given till that time i am putting this injection in contraindication category only in pregnancy so this is our study which we have done at our center and we were privileged enough to present this study at european orthopedic association and annual con of congress effort 2023 at vienna so i'll just uh, tabulate a uh, small few slides about this so we have done a study of uh, 30 symptomatic patients of adhesive capsulitis all patients were diagnosed with the help of clinical examination and mri were aged between 37 to 89 year affected by this disease had received the injection of gfc two doses of 3 ml of autologous gfc intra articular one month apart we have evaluated the patients before the start of treatment after one month six month 12 month and at the end of two year we evaluated the patients with the help of three scores that is vas score visual analog score range of motion analysis that is clinical analysis rom and subjective satisfaction by physical quotient of life index pqli adverse induction adverse effect were also recorded so this is the uh, data which, which we could collect at the starting we had 30 patients but at the end of one year we had only 26 patients we lost four patients for those patients we had no pain control or they underwent surgical intervention because of dissatisfaction with the treatment but 26 patient out of 30 patient that is 90% of the patients we had a good long term two years plus follow up and at the day one they had vas score of 
seven point six two plus minus one point seven four, and by the end of two years, their score reduced to one point two eight, which is a very significant statistical significant p value. This is the another graphic dis, uh, display of this VAS score for this adhesive capsulitis patients. No severe complications were noted during the treatment and the follow-up period. Basal follow-up was done as I informed in earlier slide. We found a strong positive effect of yearly GFC injection on pain function with 90% of the patients were very satisfied or satisfied and only four patients require surgery because of the treatment failure. Uh, this is a case uh, I just came across while I was, I was preparing the PPT. This patient is from uh, uh, near Ajmer. He came to our center. He had bilateral ankle arthritis and severe pain. In 2017, we had given him injection. He had received two doses of this injection. And nowadays, he is walking completely pain-free. This is his walking pattern. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, pattern before this uh, before the, we gave the injection, but I do collect the uh, had collected his MRI, so I'm just putting this MRI, and this particular patient have posted this picture from his uh, home only. Only uh, coming to the discussion part of this presentation, well, in randomized control trial, Mr. Lee et al. 2018 have used this injection and suggested that in osteoarthritis, it can impose significant improvement in pain and function as compared to the placebo treatment. In a different study of Mr. Dai et al. 2020, he received GFC injection for ankle arthritis, again promoted a give good positive feedback for this injection. This injection, uh, you know, has different variations like this Florido et al. have used this bone marrow concentrate injection for dissimilar effects. And this Park et al., Mr. Park et al., 2018, also used this injection along with adipose derivative stem cell injection and suggested a significant outcome. So coming to the last slide, GFC injection is safe, minimally invasive. It's a good therapeutic option for patients for good alternative treatment of various orthopedic illness. Although more research is needed to establish the optimal doses, frequency, timing of the GFC injection, but the available data suggests that this injection can reduce pain, improve function and promote regeneration of damaged tissue. Overall, it is a promising treatment, but conditions applied like for any treatment, a proper case selection, appropriate outcome counseling, accu accurate procurement of injection, exact disease site infiltra infiltrations are few hurdle which needs to be addressed for a successful injection. Thank you. So I am coming to the end of first presentation and I will start my next PPT. So can you see my screen again? Sir, it is only files. Can you see my screen? No, sir. So no. Your uh, folders are visible. Okay, okay, okay. Files okay. are visible. You can stop share and then share the presentation. Is it visible now? It's opening, sir. Wait. No, it has not opened. You can close the previous presentation and then... Okay, that's what I'm trying to do.
now uh, no sir again uh, your files are visible so you can copy paste on desktop and then uh, you open from desktop okay one second Can yes. You now? yes, yes. Great. So, uh, yeah, now you can see, dear. Shall I start? Yes, you are audible and visible. Slides okay. are visible. So, this is the next uh, uh, smaller part of the presentation, which is role of teriparatide injection in fracture non union and delaying healing. So the basic of this study is the role of this teriparatide injection in uh, those cases of non-union and delayed union is a multi-centric studies of a series of 20 patients. As we all are aware of senior citizens with those who have osteoporotic fractures. And when we give the osteoporotic management, there are only two classes of drugs. One class of drug which reduces osteoclastic activity. All those drugs are bisphosphonates, which we have denosumab injections. Those class of drugs belongs to that category. And there is only class of drug which promote osteoblastic activity is teriparatide injection. And since promote osteoblastic activity, this particular injections have dual use. One is osteoporosis management, which we are all aware. And second is fracture healing, which is gaining popularities nowadays. So the second injection of teriparatide injection is fracture healing. So all those patients who have surgically challenged cases or those patients who have positions of fracture, which is little challenging for heal union, this teriparatide injection of a short duration three to six month duration can give you a very effective and satisfactory results. But there is no substitute of RRR. That is reduction, reduction and reduction. This can help you in getting a fracture reunion for those surgical patients whom you have given a good reduction and fixation. This injection cannot substitute or cannot you know give give you uh, escape from a bad surgery so first thing is the reduction reduction and reduction and after that if you have delayed union or non union which can be a professional most misfortune that this injection definitely can help you out so it is effective in delayed bone healing and non union which represent a greater challenge in to all the orthopedic surgeons around the globe uh, 20 patients in this study have been uh, used which had with an unconsolidated fractures that were treated with teriparatide injection. It was given to difficult to treat fractures, fracture in patients with suspected or diagnosed impaired bone biology, aseptic or sterilized delayed bone healing or non-union. So this is injection giving to those patients who have different comorbidities like osteoporosis, smoking, alcohol abuse, diabetes, previous fracture and gender and few. So as you can see, osteoporosis, smoking, alcohol abuse, diabetes, all are notorious to create non-union. So these injections, when we have given this injection for those patients who had no improvement, partial improvement or complete healing, we can see that at the end of six months, this injection had shown a good healing, like 91% of the male and 75% of the female. And this entire table shows that more than 80% patients had a good healing at the end of six months of this injection in different categories, classes of the patients. This is one example of proximal fracture of the uh, uh, femur 
which is uh, you know having intertrochanteric with subtrochanteric extension which was treated with uh, first is uh, damage control surgeries by which external fixator was applied then subsequently nailing was done and after that there was a hardware breakage also which you can see in c image but after that there was no change of hardware patient was put on immobilization and teriparatide and teriparatide used for 6 month and at the end of 6 month you can see a good fracture hele second case where this case uh, this is a case of open type 3b uh, right uh, leg fracture which was treated initially with, with the external fixator and then later on the dynamization of external fixator was done at the end of two month of surgeries and teriparatide was started at the at during that time and there is a image number d which is a radiograph assessment after three month of therapy which showed the complete healing again one more fracture of shaft of tibia which had peri implant fracture in the batch we, we all can see in the msc who underwent revision surgeries and after that there was a delayed union as you can see i i think uh, you can make out in this uh, delayed union at the end of uh, 3 month and teriparatide injection was given and after end of 3 month you can see a good response coming to the results radiographic sign indicative of favorable evolution of the bone callus was observed at the end of 1 month in 15% of the cases at 3 month healing process was appreciated in 80% and complete healing of 85% with those cases who have delayed healing and non union and in all patients this therapy was well tolerated teriparatide injection plays a potentially important role in treatment of some form of delayed union and non union even in the presence of failure of hardware the results suggest a greater effect of drug in associated conditions in which the bone is in active phase of callus formation so again i am repeating this line which is a take home message of this second presentation teriparatide injection is very effective on those cases of delayed union in which the bone is in still active phase of callus formation so if you are predicting that this bone may go in delayed union or no un non union so it is a good idea to start this injection little early when there is a callus formation process is in an act in active form so that this injection can promote osteoblastic activity hence the bone fracture union uh, this is the case of our center uh, she is a lady of 60 year female patient and a survivor of sur survivor of breast carcinoma which undergone uh, different uh, surgical modalities for the same surgeries and adjuvant therapies osteoporosis was well established when we received this patient her dexa score was minus 4.7 you all can see the subtrochanteric fracture of this case this is immediate post operative this is our case which i have operated at our center and we have used both graft artificial bone graft also and have taken from the il iliac crust also and we could achieve a good reduction but since the patient was having lot of osteoporosis and this part had uh, you know brittle bone kind of presentation because of the radiotherapy uh, we struggled a lot which uh, uh, you know is very challenging in reducing subtrochanteric fracture and uh, we could fix the pfn2 but uh, unfortunately we had fracture at this part but finally we could fix this implant and we have suggested for preferably for non weight bearing for 6 week because of we had lateral valve complete fracture during the intraoperative picture uh, this is the image at the end of 2 month where the implant was still holding good and this is the image at the end of 4 month where the patient started walking happily without the help of walker implant is still holding to good and you all can appreciate the callus formation good callus formation here and this is the last image which i could receive uh, at the end of 8 month of follow up you can see ap and lateral view Im uh, implant is holding very good and you can see a complete healing in lateral wall and patient is walking unassisted with the without any help of any walker or any 
uh, external source. So uh, this patient have received periperitoneal injection in a total of six month therapy. But we had predicted that uh, we require some sort of help. So we have started this injection very early. So immediate after suture removal within 12 days after surgery. So again, this reinforced the statement of the previous study that earlier is better if you predict that there is a chances of delayed union, non-union or not very favorable outcome. So this is uh, the end of my presentation, uh, which is the end of uh, both of the presentation. And I am ready to take few questions which Dr. Ravi can guide me. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And again, yes, sir. thank you also yeah. TV team and uh, Vokar team for giving me the opportunity to deliver this lecture. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, uh, for this enlightening lecture. And uh, both the, the topics are uh, uh, very uh, near to uh, everybody's day-to-day uh, -day practice. And uh, growth factor uh, concentrate has really revolutionized uh, uh, many uh, fields. Now they are used for uh, maybe uh, wound healing, even uh, in dermatology, it has applicability. Uh, then uh, you have shared uh, various uh, indications uh, where it can be used. Very importantly, you also focused on where it should not be given. So, and an average, uh, I mean, so what may be uh, the expenses or a cost and a duration of therapy for uh, growth factor concentrate therapy? Uh, if you are procuring at your own center by buying simple EDTA tube and plain tubes, the expenditures are peanuts. Okay. But if you are not well experienced, if you do not have a proper lab setup, or you are not confident of procuring GFT injection properly, then okay. many, uh, many, uh, you know, kits are available by which you yes. can procure the team. Uh, I remember vocal team meeting me uh, with uh, this injection. That cost, that cost around five to 6,000 rupees per kit. And they help you in procuring the injection. So I think cost, if we use that kit also, is less than 10,000. And if you are well experienced in procuring, uh, without uh, the help of any kit, then only peanuts. Okay. So it requires uh, experience and uh, experienced team to support the team. Agreed. 100% agreed. Uh, uh, you require a proper lab setup with a very experienced person to procure it properly and hygienically. Uh, and uh, uh, I did not add that line. I would add this line for my uh, audience that one should be, you know, using multiple syringes. What I mean to say, you take the sample from the bottle from one needle. Okay. If you want to, you can add lignocaine a bit and then you inject in the patient joint. The needle which is used in injecting the injection in patient joint should be sterile, should okay. be the very much new one. So make sure at the end of, uh, you know, procedure, when you have sample in your uh, syringe, use a new sterile needle. By, by doing this simple technique of five rupees expenditure, you can prevent the most dreaded complication that is septic arthritis of the joint. Yes, sir. It's very important precaution. And in your practice, uh, what gauge of uh, needle you use? We use normal five ml uh, uh, this thing syringe. So I think that is to a normal twenty gauge or eighteen gauge needle. Okay. Uh, and uh, then uh, probably. Uh, the, uh, you may be also having some videos uh, where uh, to inject and how to uh, probably those, those videos may be on YouTube too. So uh, the viewers can take advantage of them. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, uh, moving to uh, uh, Terry Paratite, sir, uh, uh, you have touched upon a very important topic of non-healing delayed uh, uh, union. And uh, this lady was uh, a survivor of uh, uh, the cancer. Mm -hmm. Similarly, there are also uh, glucocorticoid induced uh, uh, fracture and uh, various complications. So do you have any experience of usage of teriparatide in such patients? Sir? Yeah, actually I have a, uh, three or four patients or those who are on a chronic glucocorticoid therapy. Recently, I have operated uh, a patient who had pitrotary microadenoma on a chronic uh, inject, uh, okay. this glucocorticoid and second patient is having severe exacerbation of COPD and bronchial asthma, who's taking nebulization regularly. Okay. I have not included those patients because they are not having osteoporotic, uh, uh, the okay. little young patients. 
बट यस दिस इंजेक्शन इज वेरी मच वेल इंडिकेटेड इन दोज पेशेंट ऑल्सो डॉक्टर रवि यू हैव टच द राइट पार्ट बट द ओनली टेक होम मैसेज विच आई ऑलवेज बिलीव देन दैट इज स्टार्ट अर्ली श्योर यू नो आफ्टर हैविंग अ प्रॉपर नॉन यूनियन देन दिस इंजेक्शन मे नॉट वर्क प्रॉपरली सो वन शुड बी हैविंग अ सेंस ऑफ माइंड being a surgeon we all have that sense of mind that when to start so if we think a little doubt yaar ise shuru karna chahiye so one should start because anyways it is not a whooping high cost surgery uh, sorry treatment it is very uh, you know uh, economical. e- economical it's hardly 100 rupees per day and uh, with the expanding or expenditure of around 15 to 20000 of 6 month they can have a good bone union so i think when we are operating a patient i think this much expenditure can be well afforded by the patient so as you touch upon that these patients are relatively young so the duration of therapy may be also less yes th- uh, i think 3 months is good enough okay 3 months is good enough now uh, again we will go to some uh, unusual patient class which can be treated with uh, periperitonite stress fracture you are having keen interest in sports medicine yes so uh, do you come across uh, any yes, such patient uh, which may be uh, a patient uh, to be treated with periperitonite i i am practicing at delhi and okay. uh, uh, this eastern part of delhi uh, there is a good amount of young boys western up fellows those who have uh, you, who go for police academy uh, admissions okay. uh, which is very common and yeah. those boys have you know habit of running from bagpat to delhi that is almost 20 kilometers per day okay so they are very prone to have uh, stress fracture of uh, lower end of tibia so i have couple of patients whom this i have given this injection and by using this injection within a one month they had a surprisingly good result but okay. unfortunately since i did not have a documented uh, you know x rays and all i have not put it in this presentation but yes for next time onwards i am starting the data and uh, if uh, uh, everything goes fine i will share with you in next presentation sure sir we will be very happy uh, to have that data because uh, these are some of the uh, therapy areas where uh that means uh, uh, certain uh, surgeons may not have a relevant patient pool it all depends on where you practice and what kind of patients are referred to you but it's always better to uh, hear somebody who has experience of treating such patient population and uh, uh, i'm sure uh, audience can implement in their, their own clinical practice so dr davi uh, we are uh, we are the thickest populated country of the world yeah we have a huge amount of patient load and if i can you know uh, suggest something to my all orthopedic friends is one line start documentation if we start documented documentations nobody other than indians can have a bigger sample size than us i practice in a small setup and i have such a good sample size trust me uh, if we all start collecting data then western world will go you know in shock that how much cases we have sure sir because uh, uh, means uh, uh, even uh, there is inclination of, uh, from foreigners uh, to come and uh, learn in india under supervision or under guidance of uh, indian surgeons and uh, this is happening so uh, i was there three months back in morocco and uh, there uh, there were uh, few surgeons who were asking about uh, which are where the center is like uh, uh, say uh, ophthalmology center ganpati netralaya somebody was asking i was pleasantly surprised that uh, somebody is asking where this is and where this, and uh, they were knowing uh, so what i am trying to say that uh, we have a uh, uh, great brains and great hands both and orthopedic surgeons require both of them so uh, again coming to uh, teriperitide uh, treatment uh, so apart from uh, i mean uh, uh, these uh, uh, unusual cases uh, probably uh, in uh, osteoporotic uh, uh, patient management what is the average duration of therapy uh, which you give uh, for those patients who have established osteoporosis the therapy should not be less than one year okay uh, because if you you give a incomplete therapy then it will definitely go in at patient dissatisfaction and uh, you know chances of fracture will still high so if you are starting the treatment because it's a daily injection one should counsel the patient properly and a therapy should not be less than one year 
even though lot of literature suggests that one and a half year to two year, but minimum should be one year. Sure. And uh, related to uh, growth factor concentrate, uh, any uh, practical message you would like to give to uh, the audience? Uh, counsel the patient. Okay. There is no shakalaka boom boom in this world. No magic. Yeah. <laughs> Always tell them the reality check. Okay. Because if you counsel the patient properly, they will come back to you even if there's an adverse outcome or a poor outcome or a bad outcome. So always counsel the patient. This injection is very, very good, very effective. I am using it at my center regularly. I am receiving, you know, the uh, most success is not patient. It's the, your doctor colleagues, those who are yeah. coming for the injection. And I am using this injection. I have given almost to 100 plus my doctor colleagues who are MBBS and seniors. Uh, tomorrow also one of the doctor colleagues is scheduled for injection. And I, being their doctor also, I talk to them as a layman. I always tell them there is a limitation of this injection. Tomorrow, the patient which is scheduled, I'll just give an example. Tomorrow, uh, one madam is there, senior gynecologist. She requires a knee replacement surgery. Okay. And she do not want, under, to, want uh, to, you know, undergo surgery. She wants this injection. Okay. So I will write four lines in her prescription. This is the take home message. Sure. Patient has been advised knee re replacement surgery. Patient do not want knee replacement surgery. This injection is not a substitute of knee replacement surgery. This injection is given only for pain management. So these are the four lines which you should educate. But yes, if you have early cases, early osteoarthritis, early adhesive capsulitis or adhesive capsulitis of advanced stage also, then the results are really very good. Really very good. But counsel the patient, talk to patient. And set the right expectations. Yes. Okay. So uh, now we are uh, towards the end of this session. And uh, means uh, it, it was wonderful to hear from you, from your own clinical experience, as well as the data what you have. And uh, those experiences you also shared at national and international platforms. We are very fortunate to hear you today uh, on this evening on both of these topics. And um, I uh, thank uh, you uh, on the behalf of Bocard, uh, which is maker of peritide, uh, a perit uh, peritide injection. Now for a uh, of thanks, I invite uh, Kanish Kumar, uh, who is a marketing manager uh, at uh, Bocard Limited. So over to you, Kanish. You are on mute, Kanish. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Actually, I'm traveling. I'm just uh, taking a flight back to Mumbai and it's raining a lot. So excuse me for that. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Karun, sir. Uh, we met, I think, almost uh, three, four months back at Delhi. And I've seen, uh, you know, you participating in multiple avenues and uh, various discussion forums, uh, showing your guidance to multiple specialties, not only which is limited to orthopedics. Thank you so much for giving us uh, this lecture, both on, you know, PRP, GSC, along with Terry Paratide. And, uh, you know, going forward, just to give you a glimpse of uh, what we are doing at Wokhart. So if you'll see, we are coming up with all the different kind of research products, whether it comes to, you know, Terry Tide or the GSC and the various kits that we have developed for. Uh, growth factor concentrates. Not only this, uh, being a research-led organization, we are also coming up with various, you know, antibiotics, which are research antibiotics, starting off with MROC, which we have already launched. And there's a very important uh, new antibiotic, which is which will in the global pipeline by the code name of WCK5222. It's a very talked about antibiotic, having a broad spectrum of coverage, which obviously will take up to all the orthopedic surgeons in the near future. But nevertheless, uh, thank you, Karan, sir, so much for uh, sparing your valuable time and taking this uh, discussion. It has been a very fruitful discussion. And thank you so much for uh, giving your time again and wishing you. you all a great weekend ahead, sir. Thank you, Kanish. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I can see that you will have a good weekend ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's raining a lot in Mumbai for the last three days. I just landed when I came to know. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Thank you. Lot, Thank you, sir. Uh,
and yeah. uh, uh, thanks a lot uh, karun sir so Thank with you. uh, your kind permission uh, uh, i will declare that uh, this uh, webinar is over sure. and uh, good night thank you do safe. take care of yourself and your yeah. health thank you very much thank you thanks to all the audiences too yeah thank you thank you thank you, thank you sir